11, Cessna 604, we're going to be doing a go around. Sorry, Will. No worries. Every pilot knows that an airport is empty until you show up, and it was no different here at Redlands Municipal Airport. And no, this is not a left traffic airport. I was just trying to avoid traffic and terrain by extending my downwind and overshot final. In retrospect, I should have done a 360 over the airport for spacing, but you live and you learn. This is a very interesting airport to come into as it has mountains to the north, the San Bernardino Airport Delta to the west, and I don't mean five miles to the west, I mean it's literally one mile from the departure end, and rising terrain to the east, so there's a lot to juggle. Redlands is a non-towered airport with runway 0826 at 4,504 by 75 feet and has a very interesting approach because the final leg and the runway are on a decline. So it could look like you're either not descending since the ground descends with you or that you are really low as you begin your final leg. Trust your altitudes and you'll be fine. I think the first time I landed here, I came in a little too hot because I was a little too high. Besides the terrain, it can also get windy and with the mountains adjacent can make being in the pattern a little sporty. There's also a common occurrence where it gets really hazy which will be reflected on the METARs and since haze creates the illusion of being a greater distance and height from the runway, adding nearby mountains to the equation means you better be on your A game. Personally, if it's hazy, we just don't go but that's just a personal minimum. While taxiing, let's talk a little history. The Redlands area actually had its first air meet in 1911, which was only eight years after the Wright brothers had their first flight, 2,000 plus miles away. Officially, the airport opened in 1947 as the Redlands Fly-In Airport, which was also when the runway was built. And in 1962, with the loan from Lockheed, yep, that Lockheed, the city purchased the land and expanded the airport. I had read somewhere, probably for flight, I can't remember, that you can ask San Bernardino Tower on the ground for permission to transition their airspace. Yeah, that's not true. Ask me how I know. Now let's talk about transportation. There is no transportation. It's a small airport, so there isn't an FBO, but I have to say this airport has one of the nicest pilot's lounges we have visited. It was about 95 degrees when we landed and we walked in and it was probably 72 inside. A huge relief from the heat. There's tons of info on the airport on the walls, along with the flight tracker screen. Honestly, Relance does it real nice. So where we're going to park, there are only four parking spots, but the additional parking section, which is just further down, close to the approach end of 26, 
There are an additional eight spots which are clearly marked with the word transient on the ground and all have tied down chains. And also each group of parking spots has a blue stripe box around them to easily identify them, which again, nice job Redlands. Alright, so in summary, what did we learn today? The pattern is tight considering the mountains to the north and San Bernardino Delta to the west. They have plenty of transient parking that are clearly visible with tie down chains. And don't ask San Bernardino for a transition on the ground, it does not work. And a final thought is I really commend Redlands for making this an easy airport for pilots to visit. So how close is Redlands to San Bernardino's airspace? Well, this close. With fire season in SoCal in full swing, Cal Fire Tankers is a common sighting into San Bernardino Airport, which is why it's important to not bust their airspace. And here's how quick you have to turn crosswind. <laughs> 